Hello noble ones and welcome to Metronauts Academy. Today we are checking out a video called The Secret World of Italian Dialects by a channel called Ollie Richards, which I had no idea it even existed, but now that I watched a little bit at the beginning of this video, I've got to say I really like it. The guy sounds really, really cool and uh, I'm really looking forward to watching the rest of his content. So let's just jump right into it and let's see if what he says about Italian dialects is correct and I'm really looking forward to him speaking about Sicilian, which is of course my dialect or regional language, shall we say. Let's go. The day that you get to drive a little red number from here to here, be prepared to be amazed by hundreds of languages and dialects because in Italy, one thing is for sure. The way they speak at the welcome sign is not the way they speak at the goodbye sign. Io porto il cacciucco, ovviamente. Io porto un po' di pappa al pomodoro. Io porto un po' d'acqua, vai. Yeah, okay, so yeah, absolutely, I mean, he does have a point. In Italy, we've got loads of different languages. I mean, you can, he knows that is just being a little funny for the video, but he, he does have a point. We have a lot of different, lot of different languages, but you can always communicate with Italian, usually. But anyways, let's continue. The Northern Dialects. Soy naseo, hai mi vinegar. Il pasticcio non è un pasticcio nel senso il casino o oddio ho fatto un pasticcio. Ma ho cantato nella maniera che la Madonna la fin pianto. Venetian is a beautiful language spoken in Venice, Verona, and all over the Veneto region, stretching from Belluno to the south side of Trentino. I have to say that I think he's English because his accent, he sounds English, but his pronunciation of Italian is spectacular. Uh, probably one of the best I've ever heard, I've got to say, so much respect for that. He must be trained in Italian because his, his accent is on point, his vowels are spectacular. So now he's talking about Venetian, of course. I've been to Venice, of course, several times, so not from there, but it's a, it's a very, it's a very interesting it's very musical, I like the way it sounds. Ven Venetian sounds really nice to me, and that's all there is to it, because I don't really understand much of what people say being southern. ...of these neighbours. It has a lovely nickname, Dialetto del Mar, language of the sea. And once upon a... I actually did not know that. So rather than me checking on this guy's uh, correctness, I think I'm just gonna learn from him today. At the time, it was the most prestigious lingua franca of the Med, one of them anyway. You'll probably even recognize these Venetian words, but even if your Italian is already quite good, Venetian can be a totally different kettle of fish. If you've ever been to Venice, you might have noticed, for example, that the street signs don't say via, they say calle, and the way people... Oh yeah, that is true. Um, Venice is what I proposed to my wife, by the way, because I'm a man with class. The way people chat is a little different to standard Italian. Thing is, Venetian is a language, not a dialect, and it even has its own written form. There are well, yeah, but for that, I've got to contrast a little bit um, because I mean, you can say that of the majority of dialects in Italy. In fact, Sicilian could be considered a regional language. Sardinian absolutely is. Furlan up in the northeast in Friuli region. So yeah, even Neapolitan. At the end of the day, this is why usually modern linguists don't really say Italian dialects anymore. We do, in Italian, we still call them i dialetti, but from a linguistic and academic standpoint, they are now called the, re the language, the regional languages of Italy. And, and I think that that's more correct. So yes, you can say that about Venetian, but really you can say that about every, any of those, again, dialects in Italy. So yeah, a little bit redundant in that case. And, and also could be a little misinforming because it might make it sound as if Venetian is special and that doesn't apply to Furlan or to Sardinian and it absolutely does. So there is that. But maybe he's gonna explain this better and this was just a smokes and screens. Did I just make that up? I feel like today I'm gonna to mess my English. My, my English, there we go, I just did. Broken English, fantastic. Lots of varieties and you might even think it sounds a bit like French or Spanish, not to mention all of that Latin, Greek and Arabic influence. I personally think Southern dialects are more connected to Spanish than Northern dialects are. Uh, but I do agree that Northern dialects sometimes sound a lot closer to French and some of them even a little closer to German, although it's still Italian, so it's a Romance language and it's a lot softer than German. Although then again, of course, German has a lot of different varieties. But let's go, Ligurian, wow, that's uh, Genova. Right next door is the Ligurian dialect, a Gallo-Italic language from the coastal region of Liguria, and it's one of the most recognizable dialects of Northern Italy. Interestingly, I think the most, he said one of the most recognizable, I I agree with him. I do believe that Milanese is more recognizable to Ligurian, so Ligure, uh, whether it be from actual Genova city or any of the, because Liguria is the region, of course. I think Milanese is more recognizable, but definitely, as he said, so he's not wrong, it is one of the most recognizable, absolutely. There is quite a bit of Ligurian in Monaco too. That is right. Monegasca is one. I had no idea. Second thing this guy taught me today. Fantastic. Definitely subscribing. 
of the dialect. A big feature of Ligurian is L sounds like R, and R just, well, it kind of disappears. For example, the word caro is pronounced cao. Quite cool, huh? Per parlare sinese è importante l'impostazione. Cada deve essere sobria, rigida, arcinia. Tu senti in belì? Red! Non te nana! Che anche ho mie donne in ta televisione. Francamente, me ne batto belì. And, now and since he mentioned it with the previous Venetian that he thinks it sounds a bit like Spanish, disagree, or French, Ligurian sounds a lot like Portuguese to me, specifically Brazilian Portuguese. If you notice, they have a lot of like nasalized sounds and the intonation, to me at least, as an Italian, when I listen to Portuguese and then I listen to this, I can tell there is a little connection. There is one, however, just to correct myself, there is one regional language which is from Emilia Romagna, which sometimes does have a similarity in intonation, not necessarily consonants, uh, because I was always saying Spanish when it comes to consonant sounds and sometimes vowel sounds and even a little grammar, southern regional languages tend to be closer to Spanish than northern ones, but when it comes to intonation, then the intonation in Emilia-Romagna tends to be quite similar to Madrid Spanish. To the point that once I heard some people from Madrid speak and I looked at them and I was about to speak Italian because I thought that they were from Emilia-Romagna and then, and then I'm like, oh wait, they're speaking, they're speaking Spanish. So. That's an interesting little fun fact that I wanted to add there. This is the most important variety which you will hear in Genoa. America. It's also interesting to say that we we say Genova. Uh, we don't Genoa is the football team now or the ancient name of the city, but now no one says Genoa uh, Genoa without V unless it's the football team. Piemontese. Anche mia mia fratella sarà in boccia. Da esso parlava da una parte, da una parte, dall'altra, bla bla. It's not quite so popular with young people. Mind you, that is probably true of many dialects. Yes, but it depends on the area. So I think in the north you are correct. The young people do use some words from these. I'll call them dialects too. Don't want to keep repeating and being pedantic. But in the south, for example, in Sicily, in Naples, and I believe in Sardinia too, depending on the area, youth still absolutely use their dialects very much. So it depends on the region. Not all regions are the same and it also depends on the area of said regions. In a way, since it's British, think of Wales because there are areas in Wales where people don't speak Welsh anymore or maybe speak a little bit and then there are other areas in the same Wales where you have actually people that use uh, as a first language or maybe bilingually uh, both Welsh and English. It's kind of a similar situation but apply to every single region in Italy although then again there are regions like for example I said Sicily, Campania and Sardinia where instead the dialect usage is still very very high including with the youth. Ciao a tutti, mi chiamo Michael e mi parlo in Lombard perché la mia lingua è la più importante delle ideologie politiche. Potalo di si fra quando si ascolta. Potale di si fra quando si ascolta. So the first guy, I understood most of it. These, this second sentence, I have no idea what they said. Pota lo dice i frat quando dice scotta. Pota dice frat e la scolpa. <laughs> you can guess this one, come on. This is the Lombard language from Lombardy, which happens to include the prestigious Milanese. I mean, it is Milan, and aside from high fashion, Milan also has some really important 13th century literature. I love Milan, it's really nice. We went there uh, just a few days ago with my wife because she hadn't seen it and I hadn't been in like 20 years and uh, Milan is always outstanding the center uh, particularly like you know Duomo so the cathedral and the gallery Vittorio Emanuele. Yeah. Lombard is actually considered a minority language that is structurally separate from Italian some Swiss people even speak it too which is quite cool if you agree and you're enjoying this video I would absolutely love your support by clicking and subscribing and turning on those notifications as well because we have, we have a lot more videos like this coming very soon. Ne un coel che boneca capitea, classila tu strea, o e tu viol, forse le un poco mental fuol. Mozamo, la ve pura, ma spendi chi tu bo. Ma quando le pura, ma spendi le la bo, spendi le che bo. Okay, here we have two closely related languages, Emilian and Romagnol. Romagnol. Romagnol is the most well-known of the two and it comes from the Adriatic coast, whereas Emilian comes from Bologna, Modena, Carpi and the surrounding areas. Modena, not Modena. But I mean, you could correct probably, what, 27 words that I mispronounced today with this stress, wrong stress, but just to say this when it's Modena. I don't know if... 
if Romagnolo is more well known than in, than Emiliano. To be honest, I think Bologna is the most well known. If I had to think, just choose one city in Emilia Romagna and think of their accent. The first one that would come to mind for me as a southern, so someone not necessarily connected to that apart from my dad's side because he's he's from Friuli. Uh, I would say Bologna. To be honest, I couldn't even count all of its dialects. If you want a good reason to learn Emilian and also happen to love Ferraris, well, here's a fun fact. The founder of Ferrari spoke an Emilian dialect. Via la vaccia, via il vadel, che vuol dire una parte di mezzo, poi di mezzo anche l'altra parte. Io sono un bel audio long, Jean, ci sono con gente che Jean. In the so I don't understand him, but I did make a video on Latin and how difficult it is for an Italian who speaks standard Italian or any other regional variety to understand it. And I have no idea what that lad said. So it's, it's effectively, it feels like a foreign language. Italian Dolomites. People speak multiple languages. Ladin, Italian, German, English. They grow up learning all of these at school. And amazingly, Ladin is so important to these Italians that they consider Italian a foreign language. And if you think the name Ladin sounds like it comes from Latin, well, it does. It originated in very isolated remote mountain areas and was influenced by a pre-Roman Alpine language called Raetic, not to mention Latin, Italian, and German. And so, yes, Ladin is a language, not a dialect, but apparently it changes from valley to valley. Yeah, I do think that maybe the only point of disagreement that I have with him is, this, um, is the line that he draws a lot. And again, very knowledgeable guy, very knowledgeable guy. I have a lot of respect for him and this video is excellent, particularly from the fact that he's made by a non-Italian. And I have to say, he's, he's saying stuff that not even Italians know. So uh, very, very cool. But he has this direct line that, of division between dialect and a language. And to be honest, I instead tend to sort of side with the scholarly thought, uh, which states that the difference between a language and a dialect is that a dialect does not have a navy and an army, which, to be honest, is, is what I think. I think the division is not uh, linguistic, it's social linguistic, and in fact, political in a way. Also, because if you think about it, some of these uh, dialects of Italian th that he calls dialects, I couldn't understand a word. And I could understand more standard Spanish, like Castilian Spanish, than I could have understood this. And I've tried this even with, for example, people in Argentina, usually I can understand like 80, 90% of what they say without any training, unless it's like particularly technical. Whereas there are some Italian dialects that I don't understand, like more than 20% or 25%. And yet these are dialects of, of Italian and Spanish is a separate language. It's social political rather than being actual linguistic. At least that's my opinion, my position would be really, uh, I'll be looking forward to see if he, what he thinks about that. Are we even a little bit surprised? Of course we're not. And it has one very close relative. Allora, è abbastanza difficile trabajar para Furlan in questa situation perché che eh, hai una situation particolare. Do these words look Italian to you? Well, Friulian is a language from North East Italy, and there are four dialects of Friulian, and it even has some unexpected influence. Slovenian. Kids who go to school around here are growing up bilingual because teaching the traditional language is taken very, very seriously. Good work. Yeah, um, again, I don't want to be that guy, but like my dad is from Udine. He's from there and his family is sort of split. He doesn't really speak it. He knows a few words. His brother instead speaks it fluently. So it's not really a matter of they all grow up bilingual. It's a matter of it really depends on where they're from, where they are located and how much Italian they speak in the family or with their friends. So I know I have a lot of friends from Friuli who don't speak Furlan. And I also have other friends still from Friuli who do speak it and speak it very well. So when it comes to Friuli and Furlan, they're not all bilingual. Unfortunately, I would like to say, because it is a treasure of a language, that one too. Uh, to all my friends, if anyone from, from Friuli is watching this please let me know if you do speak Furlan and if you do Mandy Altro da dire sono contenta di vivere qua nel Trentin se sta bene come vi ripeto se mangia bene Mi lo guarda a distanza di un berretto della non testa e che fa qua padre ma il collasto Artista. Here's another dialect carrying ghosts of the Germanic tribes. Trentin is spoke in and around Trentino and is influenced by its neighbors, Ladin and Venetian. By the way, with many of these varieties, the line between language and dialect can be so fuzzy that people will not agree. Problem is, standard Italian is itself influenced by surrounding dialects. So in the end, how can you tell what's a dialect of Italian, what's a dialect of another Italian language, and what's a dialect of a dialect? You get the idea. 
Precisely. <laughs> Tuscany is one of Italy's most beautiful regions, and you'll hear the Tuscan dialect in Florence, Lucca, Pisa, the Umbria region. I have a dedicated video link in the description. Region, and even on the islands of Sardinia and Corsica. I don't know whether I should be pronouncing these words in Italian or English. You're just going to have to work with me on this one. And there's something intriguing about the way that they speak. <laughs> yeah, but you should get um, someone, because I notice you often use these two guys, which are really fun. They're nice lads, but you should find someone who speaks it as a native because otherwise what these kids are doing now is I think in my opinion they are kind of putting it on and exaggerating and I think it, if you again I hope you are English because I keep assuming that you are from Britain but I'm just saying if you are uh, let's say that you, you I think you have a southern accent now imagine if someone from the north was trying to put on a southern accent or vice versa if you were trying to put on a northern accent unless you're really really skilled people from that specific location whether it be Manchester Liverpool and whatever have you it will probably tell you nah that's not how we speak and probably you would say that if someone was trying to put on like, you know when they say mockney instead of cockney like people they're trying to put it on and they're exaggerating this is what this sounds to me <coughs> tuscan is pretty famous because they substitute the hard c the hard k sound with a breathy sound so for example the word for ant formica is pronounced formija it's called the tuscan throat and you should see what they do to their verbs yes uh, gorgia Toscana. Anyone know what the most famous variety of Tuscan is? I'm talking about the dialect that Italian is based on. Firenze, Firenze è straordinaria, è arte, è struttura. Tu scendi, tu guardi, tu vedi, tu fai, ci sono gli uffizi. Yes, it is Florentine, the dialect of Florence. Intrigued? Well, you can hear that amazing origin story in this video right here. I'll definitely check it out. Uh, it's interesting to say though that uh, standard Italian is in fact, as he says, based on Florentine language, but it's not the same as the Florentine language. So um, someone speaks with the Florentine, and I'm not saying that he said that, but I'm just saying just to underline, standard Italian is its own thing. One of the strongest con points of connection between standard Italian and the Florentine accent uh, tends to be the vowel system. But when it comes to word usage and accent, they're quite distinct. I personally really like Tuscan. It's in fact my favorite dialect and language, pronunciation, accent, whatever you want to call it. Just wanted to be precise. Romanesco. Important to say though that the first person that he showed, he's a comedian and he wasn't saying anything. It's a joke. That one is specifically a show where he goes through all of the dialects but actually says nothing and, and just makes it sound like it. So is the sound kind of accurate? Sure, in some areas, but he's not actually saying words. Just wanted to underline that. He was saying nothing. Now, if you want a bit of sa Miruda in my accent. Sass in your Italian, well, you will find it in Rome, believe you me. Romanesco is one of the central Italian dialects from the metropolitan city, especially in the center. It's a lot like Tuscan and standard Italian, but has some notable differences in spelling and pronunciation. The rule in Rome seems to be drop any vowels at the start of a word and double any consonants. And apparently these Roman city kids don't roll their R's. If you're from Rome, is this true? No, I do think they roll. No, they do roll their R's. That's incorrect. It's called, I think, alleggerimento delle geminate. I don't remember the technical term, but basically when you have a double R, they pronounce it as a single R sometimes. So it's still rolled, but instead of saying guerra, they'll say a guerra. So that's what happens. And, and again, I'm not from there, so maybe have someone from there do it. But they still roll the R, but they don't do double. The south of Italy is where most of the regional languages are spoken, so if you like a bit of a walk on the wild side, maybe the south is for you. La Bruzzese non è una lingua che tu pumbara la scuola, quindi per esempio io non le posso scrivere, le parli soltanto perché le parlevo quando eri piccere in lingua e non. Eccoci, 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 per la scuola fredda! Yeah, I did understand what he said. Uh, it's very different to my language, but I could tell what he is. Once again, the person now, remember, he's not actually saying words. Abruzzo is home to some rare living species and it's also home to a few rare living Italian dialects. In L'Aquila province, there is one called Calascino. Want to see how it compares to Italian? Check it out.
La seconda lingua più parlata in Italia dopo l'italiano è il napoletano, la lingua della città di Napoli, della regione Campania e di buona parte, nelle sue varianti, uh, del sud Italia. È eh, bello. Important to say what he spoke now, he had a bit of an accent, but it was standard Italian, he didn't speak Neapolitan right now, he spoke about Neapolitan. Let's see if this guy speaks actual Neapolitan. Friccicarilla sai, chi ne gente popolare, scostumata e friccicarilla. Time to go big. Here is a language that you will hear in, of course, Naples or in your own country if you love Italian music because Neapolitan music is pretty successful around the world. The language is interesting because unlike Italian they use a very flat sound like the schwa the uh in English you know like an about. It's not typical Italian at all and you'll hear it all. It's very true uh, they do that uh, particularly at the end of words sole. Now a good example is io becomes i. Yeah they do have that thing the, the schwa as he's saying very correct this guy is really on point all over the south basso lazio abruzzo puglia calabria neapolitan has the most speakers out of all the regional languages they say it's very difficult i'm not sure if i misunderstood him but did he say that neapolitan is spoken in calabria because i mean calabria has its own calabrese but i'm sure he knows it i must have misunderstood him because they're very different calabrian vowels are like so so open compared to Neapolitan vowels which tend to be very close. To understand, maybe because of its Greek origins or perhaps it's the Spanish, French and Arabic influences. I don't know, but you... I don't know though, it depends where you come from because as a Sicilian I find Neapolitan a lot easier to understand than, for example, some northern dialects, so there's that. You hear a lot of cut-off words, you know, like how they say brothers and sisters, for example, and the word for now comes straight from Latin. And if you want more of that, go and check out the Italian TV series Gomorra. Finally, we are now at the bottom of the boot. This is the extreme south of Italy, the tips of Calabria and Apulia, Salento and other stunning places. In Calabria they speak Italian, regional varieties of Neapolitan and the so-called extreme southern dialects, all collectively known as Calabrian. And all of these dialects came directly from Volga Latin, by the way, not from Tuscan. La carota, carot. I disagree that they come from Valga Latin. I have a video, if you want, down below. Uh, I don't think there was any such thing as Valga Latin. I think they just derive from Latin. And if you want to know more why I state that Valga Latin did not exist, I'm not the only one, of course. It's a specific scholarly position. Once again, link in the description. Lin salata, zalut, zalutu. La Ferrari, afru, what? We can't leave out the heel of the boots, possibly, can we? The two biggest dialects of Apulia come from the city of Bari and from the Salento region. What do you think of these expressions from Bari? I love this very common phrase in Salentino, Lusule Lumare Luiento, which means the sun, the sea, the wind. Basically the Salentino version of a, don't worry, be happy. It's beautiful, and you're gonna hear it everywhere. But you won't hear it in your Italian uncovered course because, well, we teach standard Italian in our courses so that you can speak and be understood everywhere you go in it. Okay, so he teaches Italian, makes sense, because I mean, again, his pronunciation is spectacular. I wish he used more. I want to hear him speak more. I'd like to hear him speak Italian. I'd like to find a video, maybe do a little review. Oh, Sicilian, Sicilian. Now you've done really, really well so far. Don't you mess with this one or I'll introduce you to the fishes. Se mi fai parlare, infatti... Eh, volessi a capire, Kumba. Qualcuno prima o poi mi la va a dire. Perché chi stai in più canta e non sei in più culo, Kumba. Eh, eh, mi fai parlare... Una, se non mi interrompi... Fa... Però, Kumba, e che disse? Palla, palla, non si può dire niente, picciotte me. Sicilian is the main language of Sicily and you will hear it in parts of Calabria and the Aeolian Islands. It's also the second most widely spoken language in Italy. It all began around 1200 BC with the indigenous language of the first inhabitants of Sicily. And it might even be the very first language to develop from Latin. But Sicily had many conquerors, Arabs, Spaniards, Vikings, and they all played a part in shaping the language. So how Italian are Sicilians? How do you say, would you like to dance with me? We're very Italian, by the way. And did you know Sicilian has no future tense? If you want to say, tomorrow I'll write to you, you just say, tomorrow I write to you. Although a lot of Italians speak like this. 
Anyway, according to my Italian friend, Sicilian is very hard to understand, but luckily everyone also speaks standard Italian. Of course they do. It's Italy. Just remember guys, most Italians speak their own dialects, but also standard Italian. So if you want to learn Italian, well, you have absolutely nothing to worry about. It's important to say about Sicilian that there isn't one single Sicilian and uh, there is a massive, massive difference due to all those different influences from different populations, as he mentioned, including the Greeks, for instance, which I don't know if he mentioned, which shaped these languages within Sicily very differently. So my Sicilian is from Palermo uh, and it will sound and use vocabulary and even grammatically when it comes to the syntax will be very very different from the Sicilian spoken in the center or in Agrigento, Caltanissetta, even all the way to Siracusa, Catania, etc. And even the vowel system is different, believe it or not, between very close cities as well, like Palermo and Trapani, very different. And if you want to hear me speak fluent Sicilian, link in the description. You should check it out. Come on, do it for the family. Usare tu questa sa limba che mi piace te bruso te tutto sa limba sa romanza sa eh una limba meta speciale per me. Sardinia is the second biggest. I think this guy was foreign though. He was speaking Sardinian, but I think he's studying Sardinian, but I don't think he's from Sardinia. Island in Italy, right in the middle of the Mediterranean, and this is where you will find Sardinian, the language closest to Latin of all the Romance languages. And thanks to being so isolated from the rest of Italy, Sardinian was well preserved over many centuries. Well, apart from those few. Yeah, it's true. It's got, it depends on the on the area though. I think it's Northern Sardinian, the one that has preserved uh, some specific sounds that are connected not only to Latin, but specifically to classical Latin pronunciation. So even though Italian is closer to ecclesiastical Latin, a more modern type of pronunciation that usually people study at school in Italy, in Sardinian, there are words such as Kentu, to mean 100, which are closer to Kentum, which was the pronunciation of Latin before it changed into Centum, uh, which is much closer to Italian. It's more of an Italian pronunciation. Influences. I am Arichoku Gusagonka Kalam. Alla Machanesil. A certain Spanish influence is... That was just a joke though, he was making fun at the end of a more of a like Tunisian or even Arabic sounding uh, pronunciation, so that one wasn't supposed to be a Sardinian, even it though is a joke, of course, that was, that was a joke by the comedian. Spanish influence is plural words ending in S, which never happens in Italian, and they're doing something right in Sardinia because more people are making it to 100 than anywhere else on the planet. Which of these languages or dialects did you enjoy the most? And if you happen to know an Italian dialect that we didn't mention here, or one that we did mention here, do me a favor, write a little bit of that dialect in the comments below so that we can check it out. And if you want to know how standard Italian was the lucky chosen one, why they chose that and nothing else, well, you should definitely watch this video next because it will reveal the entire story. I'll definitely check it out. So again, hello to Ollie Richards, fantastic video. You did a great job. So uh, I'm gonna subscribe and then I'll check out your the rest of your content and perhaps we'll find something else to review together here in the Academy. Thank you very much for watching and joining Metatron's Academy.